Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another episode of What Is It Wednesday? Today, I am on location in another part of Southington for you. We are at the Southington Historical Society, and you might be wondering why we're at the Southington Historical Society. Well, a few reasons. For one, the Southington Historical Society has this room that I think the letters are backwards behind me, but this is the Sylvia Bradley Room. We're going to learn about the connection of the Southington Historical Society to the Barnes Museum, and Sylvia Bradley and her daughter Emma uh, are certainly a part of that history. This also used to be our town library, the building that we're standing in, and the Barnes Museum is run under the direction of the library and the library board, so there's a connection there. But the other reason I wanted to bring us here is because on Monday, if you saw our post on our Facebook page, you'll know that Monday was International Museum Day. And Southington is blessed to not just have one, not just have two, but have three separate museums in our town. We have the Barnes Museum, we have, of course, the Southington Historical Society that we're in right now, and we also have the train depot along the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail. So there's so much history uh, to learn from in our town, and I am here today with a very special guest, uh, and let me flip the camera over to him now. I'd like to introduce you. You might not be able to recognize him with a mask on, but this is a board member and treasurer of the Southington Historical Society, Walter Grover, who is also our acting chairperson of the Library Executive Board. So Walter, thank you so much for having us here today. Uh, very, very excited to learn about the history. Uh, what you got for us? Well, thanks for coming here, Bonnie. Bonnie, it's great not to have to be on a Zoom call and actually be live with someone. <laughs> it's wonderful to be at the Historical Society for the first time in over two months, as unfortunately we've been closed due to this uh, pandemic. First, I hope everyone is safe, everyone is well, and uh, we look forward to having you come back and check out our museum when we do reopen. Uh, not, there hasn't been any talks yet to an exact date, but uh, check our Facebook page and stay tuned. Now, today I thought it would be wonderful to meet in our military room. Our military room is just perfect for this week as we celebrate Memorial Day weekend and all those who made the ultimate but before this was the Historical Society, this was our first dedicated library in town. And in the late 1800s, I want to say 1896, the small library collection was held at the old town hall in the courthouse, or in a courtroom. And in 1902, Lucius Walkley, a wealthy um, business owner, he owned Walkley and Holtz in Plantsville, a manufacturing company, and he also owns a large dairy farm on Bellevue Avenue. And he uh, dedicated or gave us $5,000 and told the town of Southington, match it and we can put $10,000 into a, a library that's dedicated. And this building, the front two rooms and its rotunda were uh, added built in 1902. It's a neoclassical revival. You just don't see buildings like this. You anymore. don't. It is just it's absolutely, absolutely stunning. Beautiful. I hear all the time about people that have been driving by the society for years. They don't realize how large it is inside. And they really don't realize how beautiful it is here. And what a vast collection you have as yeah. well. I mean, it's amazing. The collection, thanks to Southington residents, Thanks to people that grew up in town who may have moved out of state, uh, has donated thousands of items that make up our history, make up our all the stories that led us to this point. Uh, we live in a great community, and we have, I don't know what our collection is up to, but at any given time, we can only have about 30% of it out here to be presented. So, 1902, the front building opened, uh, the front two rooms, the rotunda, and then there was a need for an addition. And thanks to Emma Bradley Yeoman no Newell. Newell, that's right. Oh, I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> now, Emma Bradley Yeoman's Newell was Sylvia Bradley's daughter. 
And Sylvia Bradley, of course, is the grandmother of Bradley Barnes. Sylvia was the one that was married to Eamon, uh, and we've talked a lot about him in our What Is It Wednesday broadcasts. Um, but Sylvia herself was the loving mother of Emma, and Emma is the reason why we have several monuments here in town. So uh, she gave the town of Southington the beautiful light fixture on the center of the town green. Those of us who know the Fritter booth uh, during the Apple Harvest Festival, there is a fountain right next to that. That is in honor of Edward Yeomans, her first husband. And Emma was, her house was actually that white house that is now the Elks Lodge, that, that next to Webster Bank, that beautiful uh, white building. So Emma did a whole lot for our town, including what you're about to tell us what she did here. <laughs> she sure did. She uh, bequeathed in 1917 the uh, money that would uh, allow the library to expand in 1930, adding just two larger rooms that faced Bradley Memorial Hospital. One of those rooms was dedicated to her mother, Sylvia Bradley. And if you want to get a shot of that. And that is exactly Wonderful. where we are, the Sylvia Bradley room. So this is one of the, the beautiful additions there. And if you see in the back, we actually have an exhibit uh, where a lot of items are uh, given to us by the late Adam Laskowski, the last surviving World War I soldier, someone that I remember as a child participating in our apple harvest parades. So we have some of his items as well as other items that are all from World War I. Beautiful collection. Beautiful. But yes, this is the Sylvia Bradley room. And right now you're taking a look at uh, some of the work that we're doing in the museum while we're closed. You just saw the desk of Governor Marcus Holcomb. Ah, that is this desk right governor here. Governor Holcomb was our governor during World War One. And he also has a connection to the Bradley Barnes family. He was Leela uh, Leela Barnes's, um, Leela Barnes was his uh, great niece. So that was Bradley's wife. There's all kinds of connections in town. When you get to learn about the families who made Southington what it is today, it, it really is a collection of great stories. Very, very true. I'd love to show them the rotunda, Walter. Can we go in and take a peek? We can take a peek. We are working on the rotunda. It's the, uh, the, and again, uh, the reason why I want to show you the rotunda, folks, is I'll, we'll just go up to the ceiling. We will go up to this beautiful piece of architecture. It has the different sections of Southington. We've got Milldale and Plantsville and Marion, but beautiful, beautiful. Well, Walter, Shall we come go back to the military Let's room? Let's go back to the military room. What do you want to tell us about in here before we wrap things up? So before we wrap it up with the library, um, in 1975, the new library was built, and this building that we, I stand in became the Southington Historical Society and the Southington Arts Council. And until two years ago, uh, part of the Arts Council was still in our basement. So we now have the entire building. Uh, we are always looking to do projects to restore the building and to offer more exhibits, to offer more space for our volunteers to work in. So we are, we are so pleased to have this space to share with the town and to share your history. Now we were talking about before we started um, the beautiful armed forces going back to Memorial Day over yeah. here. We have uh, what you said, this is just one company of all the soldiers who fought in World War. This is from World War II. And Southington has always been patriotic. We've always had a lot of men and women who have served in uh, the wars, uh, served in the military during peace. This is from Peck Stowe and Wilcox Company. This is just a list of the men who served in World War II from this one factory. In wow. fact, during World War II, we saw over 30% of Southington men uh, enlist in the war. And Can some of, I, that's so many, so many people. And, and we thank them for their service. 
uh, I believe 33 of them did not return. They did make the ultimate sacrifice for our country, for our way of life. And during this time in World War II, it wasn't only the men who fought that were our heroes. If you walk over here, Bonnie, we had well over a thousand ladies who worked in our manufacturing because manufacturing was ramped up for defense and we had to increase production. And they were a vital part of our defense. They were a vital part of making sure we had the weapons, the tools, and everything needed to uh, defeat the battles in uh, Europe as well as in Asia. Absolutely amazing. Wonderful. So, Walter, if folks wanted to, uh, once you guys are up and running and open again and whatnot, if folks wanted to uh, come in, what are your hours typically? Our typical hours from April through December is Thursday from 5 to 8. In the winter months, we're open Saturday from 12 to 3, so we're open during daylight hours. Usually during the winter months, we also do free appraisals where you can bring in items, anything that you can carry, you can bring in, and you'll have one of three appraisers take a look at it and give you an idea if you have a treasure or if your treasure is a junk. <laughs> Unfortunately, a treasure to your heart, maybe not to your pocket, yeah, right? <laughs> a treasure to your heart. So, um, and I, I, always looking for volunteers and whatnot like yeah, that and members. We are always looking for volunteers. We are always looking for donations as we have many projects that need to take place in our basement and up here. Uh, painting, floor replacement, um, changing displays, changing mm -hmm. different display cases as we expand with our um, collection. So if anyone is interested, I would encourage you all to go to our Facebook page, Southington Historical, and send us a message and we'll give you the information. Um, our address is 239 Main Street in Southington, 06489. If you did want to mail out a donation, you can also check us out at Southington, I just misplaced it, southingtonhistory.org. So that check is. us out there as well. And keep, uh, keep checking back for announcements of when we'll reopen and uh, how we'll reopen. Thank you so much. Again, Walter, this is a vital part of Southington's history and so many towns um, are fortunate enough to have historical societies. I've been extremely impressed with the Southington Historical Society in the last like eight, six, eight years, the amount of work that you have all put in on these uh, displays, the research behind them, uh, and the understanding of your collection just grows every single day, and you're doing a wonderful job. Uh, we, we love the fact that we get to share Southington's history with uh, a society such as yours. So thank you so, so much. And I appreciate you, Bonnie, for coming here today. And uh, yeah. what a fitting place to be for our Memorial Day weekend. So, it is. Uh, we hope everyone takes a moment to remember our fallen heroes, those who did not return from battle. Uh, there were hundreds of Southington residents throughout the uh, centuries dating back to before the Revolutionary War. We had uh, residents in Southington who actually fought in the French Indian Wars. So we do have a history of Southington residents stepping up, fighting for their community, fighting for their country, and I hope we all take a moment this weekend to remember those who did not return. Thank you so, so much. Folks, please support your local museums. Uh, I cannot say enough. Um, museums hold the treasures to our historic past and our prehistoric past even. There's beautiful rocks from like the Terminal Archaic in the back there uh, and uh, artifacts. Please support your local museums uh, and learn more about history. There's so much we can learn about ourselves by looking into our past. So thank you so, so much. Again, thank you to the Southington Historical Society and Walter, and we look forward to seeing you on What Is It Wednesday next week. Bye, folks.